Bounty hunters. We don't need that scum. I'll take on in a job. For the right price. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegration. Hunting is a complicated profession. Welcome in to yet another season of The Carbonite Chronicles, brought to you by the Hyperspace Podcasting in the 25th century. This show is dedicated to reviewing the Disney Plus award-winning show, The Mandalorian. My name's Matt. I'm Jared. I'm Mike. And guys, we got a special guest tonight, don't we? Do we? Well, is he that special, really? <laughs> well, I, that goes a long way. <laughs> well, <laughs> guys, tonight we have Brian, who is infamous as being one of the country's top Star Wars collectors. You might have heard him or even seen him on one of our shows on uh, the podcast or YouTube. Uh, his collection is legendary. How are you, sir? Hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks for having me on again. Our pleasure. Before we get started, uh, how's everyone doing? I tell you what, I'm ready for some Mandalorian. Oh, it's been a it's been a long uh, time. It's been too long. It's been you know about uh, nine or ten months. Yeah, that's too long. So, Brian, uh, what's new in your life? Have you gotten any new uh, any new collectibles? Well, I went to a little local toy show this weekend and picked up this droid's side gunner in a box. It was it's a uh, pretty difficult to find vintage piece and i found a pretty good price on it and snatched it up as long as well as a uh lobot on oh. a return of the jedi card lobot. which is not a very sought after item but this one was in really good shape and it's hard to find them with a clean card a lot of times they have an offer sticker on them and people have tried to rip them off and they're all shredded and it's terrible and <laughs> you don't want them but this one I saw, and I was like, I got to have that. It looks nice. too good to pass up. So a couple well, of things. And then I'm working on getting my Legos together to build a starship. <laughs> you know, I, I started one of those projects with my son, and uh, I had no idea how long and how intricate that stuff is to build that stuff. It's insane. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking at some plans online to build that medical frigate from the end of empire strikes back. It's, it's like 7,000 pieces or something. Oh my gosh. So I've got tubs of Legos in my basement right now. <laughs> I'm surrounded. Well, good luck, sir. Um, well, Thanks. I think what we should do is we should watch the trailer guys. What do you think? Trailer. Let's do it. For yeah. what? Uh, it's for uh... the last Jedi. Oh, well, I'm out. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count down to the trailer. If you want to watch it with us, feel free to start it. And uh, then we're going to break it down for you guys. So, without further ado, I think we should get it going. Do it. Well, you see here Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant gas giant. Is that Earth? Oh, man. they finally they tying it in. Like a man Mando ship is all wrecked. Yeah, it yeah, is. Like a cargo doors hanging open. Engines all sparking. What a mess. They just shot an alien out the back. That's true, yeah. Ripley was on board. Now, I've I've been told, you know, look. Look at the background there. Yeah. Um, Corellia. Oh. It could be on Corellia. All right. It looks like kind of like it did in Solo. Oh, we got maybe right. a little Tatooine. This uh... is obviously Jakku here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't make it like another desert planet. That some no, I, I totally agree with that. Happen to be a little on. Mon Calamari here. Oh, those are Corrin. I'm worried about having a wrestler in there. We've already had what mixed <laughs> martial arts, and <laughs> while her character is good, you know she's not the greatest actress. That is this is the most way. likely Sabine Wren. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. He's on a boat. He's got X-Wings escorting him all over the place. Yeah, with yellow markings. A little fan service with some X-Wings. Yeah. I love it. 
Oh, those TIE fighters. Oh. I like the shot of the speeder bikes jumping off a cliff. Yeah. He's on Hoth, quite obviously it's Hoth. I got some Gamorians, Gamorians battling skinny those are some, Yeah, I was about to say, those are some Cyclops with perfect, non-accented standard. And the uh, the Cyclops guy is actually an alien from the Cantina in episode yeah, four. I recognize him. He's an Abyssian, nice. they call them. There's a Zabrak that just got a this is the way. stake through the heart. All right. Okay, so there's some things to unpack here. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, first off, oh, before we get so in fast... Before you get into the no. full details, I, I think it's much like what we said last season. Right now, what I just saw visually is comparable, if not better, than anything I saw from from uh, any of the movies recently. This yeah. is as good as any movie. Oh, no, yes, it's absolutely. this show has always looked like a movie. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to change in season two. I think it's actually... You know, in the Entertainment Weekly interview, Favreau said they're actually, you know, expanding the scope. So I would expect it's going to look even better wow. in season he, one. You know, watching season one, you know, I kind of thought there were a few times it felt like, like that volume that they use for their screens felt like a soundstage a couple of times. But watching this... It just seems like they've just amped it up so much more, and it just seems so much better. Like they've almost perfected it at this point. I don't know, man. It's I don't, I don't know if impressive. I agree with that, because I thought, when I found out they were shooting on that that screen, I was blown away. Like, yeah, you I know, was too. The stuff like in the canyon, when he's first got the, the baby, I, I would have thought for sure that was a location. I mean, I, abso I was absolutely convinced that that was a location. Don't don't get me wrong when I, I, am when I say wrong. that. I think what I just said clearly <laughs> shows that I'm getting no, it wrong. There there were a couple of instances that felt like a soundstage, even though it wasn't. It just felt a little hollow at times. But it was it was a very rare instance. It wasn't like all the time or anything. It was just a couple of times. It was like that. I loved it. It was fantastic. Seeing the behind the scenes stuff, it's tricked my brain now because. I'm always in the first season. I wasn't looking for the trick because you know I didn't know what the trick was. I figured they're doing some location shooting here. You know they're probably not. You know they're not in Tunisia shooting this, obviously. But you know maybe they're in, you know, the California desert somewhere. But see, my brain still can't can't find the seams, and it's bothering. It's bothering me. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about the way they make it now, there's, it's, you're not going to see any seams. I know. And I mean, it's, it's, it's super high def, live action, yeah, movement behind them. I mean, the the fact that they pulled that off of video games was brilliant because that's what you know. And it's like amazing no one had even thought of it before then because when you're playing a video game, that's exactly the camera. It, the the picture is constantly rendering itself from the perspective of the camera. Of the camera. And they took that and they applied it to the show. And it's, I uh, it's you know. And I think the thing too, and this was a little off topic, but I think with what we're seeing in the industry changing as far as like you know, will movies come back? You know, I think this is a way we'll still get the same quality of feature on the small screen now mm -hmm. because it won't you know you're obviously you're not looking at as much money that you're and obviously you're not, not going to be making now you're not using green screens i mean what the camera mm -hmm. sees is what you see right, right. it's and, it's already there i so, mean we're all very yeah. lucky that the mandalorian is being made this way for the budget it's being made because it's really but i mean it's upping the bar it's upping the bar for productions for TV for like streaming TV. It's like it, it's it's not letting people just kind of like make it on a bud on like a, a shoestring budget. Like if you're going to compete and you're going to be like recognized and you're going to be watched, you have to go big. And I love it. I think this is a very cool to Mike's point evolution of maybe what we're going to see on um on home entertainment versus having to go to the movies to see this kind of quality. It's very cool. I have to I have to start out because it's making me laugh. And I I'm thinking, believe it or not. Back to Cobra Kai. I knew it. Back. I almost did. Back to what? <laughs> you said, believe it or not, and Mike said, I'm walking on air. Oh, yeah, of I course. I was <laughs> starting to sing that. <laughs> so so hear me out. So if you watch Cobra Kai, uh, Johnny Lawrence is a, a complete caveman. 
which is almost to an unbelievable level of cavemanity. Um, but, you know, it's kind of funny, and I, I've been watching a lot of, of different videos and takes on the Mandalorian trailer, and, and a lot of consistent feedback is kind of like, hey, look, we've got one of the top bounty hunters out there. To be a bounty hunter in this kind of industry, you obviously have to be street smart. You have to have a lot in your arsenal, not just physically, but you have to be smart. You have to, you know, know the tricks. You have to be in and out. You have to know cultures. You have to know languages, et cetera, et cetera. So for him and even the uh, the blacksmith, whatever her name was. Armorer. The armorer. To be ignorant of who the Jedi are makes me laugh. Yeah. In a very fresh post-Empire world. And... Manda would have been alive, most likely, during the reign of the Jedi, or at least. So, I got one I thing to it, say to that. Yeah, please, jump in. I've been from one side of this galaxy to the other, seen a lot of strange stuff. I've never seen anything to right, make fair. me believe. I guess if you live your life on the outer rims, <laughs> and you really don't venture into the more civilized systems, maybe then you don't get that kind of education, you don't get that kind of... Uh, you know, glean that from people, but I do find it kind of funny that somebody who is so okay, you know, worldly and universally, you know, competent. Doesn't Let me ask you this: How many monks do you run into on a daily basis? At least five. Okay, well, I don't talk to any of them. Though. I just run into them. <laughs> I think I think it's totally within the rules of the universe. What's well, got? I have to believe it. I can't argue it. I'm just there putting were, it out there. At the time of the Phantom Menace, there were ten thousand Jedi in the galaxy. It, a, a, Tr- trillions of beings in the galaxy. There's 10,000 Jedi. Sure. I, I, it, it but does, they led every army that the Republic had. They made all the rules. Well, they had also, great you, you they gotta, all dress like, you gotta like think, moisture farmers. You got to think about two decades of suppression of history by Palpatine as well. That's no, fair point. Erasing fair point. all vestiges of the Jedi. Yeah, that's a fair point. So, you know, I buy it. A lot of people have problems with it. Han Solo, for me, seals the deal. If, if he's a 30-year-old man in Episode Four and he, he doesn't believe in the Jedi or the Force, I, I can buy that the Mandalorians who hide in a sewer don't know. <laughs> you know, they, 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 hide, they have the Jedi as, as creatures of some distant memory. Okay, I, you've helped I, you've helped correct my 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 error ways then. I, okay, I'm, I'm well that's that's why I'm here. You know, I did win the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Trivia Challenge. You know, Work Davis is still stalking you. Yeah, I know. My friend Charlie, our all all we all know Charlie. Um, oh yeah. He thinks that the Mandalorian ship is flying over the gas giant Endor, and that's the forest moon of Endor we see in the background there. It's possible, sure, yeah. We'll see. I mean, the, the, of course, the Mandalorian. What if the yeah. story is they're following the trail of like Luke Skywalker? Oh, I thought you were going to say like Wilford Brimley. Yeah, no, that was no. I, w- I, I can Brimley, see how you would think that he he would have been on Endor at some point. You see yeah, what I'm I don't saying? know. Like they start at Tatooine, and sure, you know, Luke went to Hoth and went to Endor, and wow, I you mean, know that would be a yeah, lot of fan service thought. to hit all those. That's a great take. I'd have I. You know, you're connecting the dots there. You've got an ice planet. You got a desert planet. You got the the green planet. It's very possible. I think it would be cool. What if there's like he actually runs up on Luke Skywalker and Luke Skywalker is at a, a, a at a crisis of of conscious and Mandalorian leans over and says, "No one really likes you. Just go to an <laughs> island and, and just become a hermit." <laughs> When they're flying through the clouds, it's very reminiscent of Bespin. Yeah, you don't really know yeah, where absolutely. they are. So, what if what if Mike is right and it was following through some different places where Luke has been? That'd be quite fascinating. They could easily, with today's technology, make a sixty-five-year-old Mark Hamill look like a thirty-five-year-old Mark oh, Hamill. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you saw what they did to Kurt Russell in Guardians of the Galaxy and Michael Douglas. And, well, you know, it's, I think we're getting a little ambitious here. I don't know if Mark Hamill would be. I think he's I'm got just a, saying. A, but a look, tinge of bitterness after the movies. <laughs> you know, but Mark Hamill is also a Mandalorian fan. So, well, yeah, you I'm, never know. I'm saying so, at this point, everything's on the table. Mm-hmm. So going going back to the X wings, actually, so. We've kind of seen the outer rims of what the remnant of Imperial forces kind of have done and look like a little bit. 
So are we going to see kind of like the dawn of the New Republic here? Our X-Wings of Republic course. X-Wings? Well, we already so, saw those in the last season. Yeah. But the, these so. have um, yellow markings on them. And if right. you notice in that shot, the Razor Crest also has yellow markings on it that weren't there in season one. Mm-hmm. Is he allied with these guys now? Because I think it's obvious the X-Wings are flying escort for him. They're not chasing him. And that, Hard to tell. I, Hard to tell. I, that's that's my takeaway. I also wonder if they're going to tie it into the Kenobi show somehow. Well, the Kenobi show would have happened decades before. Yeah, but they could have Kenobi, like, in his episodes, leave something in his house that the Mandalorian finds. That's awesome. Cool. You meant, like, they're going to go to, like, a beach planet and, like, Obi Ghost is going to be, like, with a pina colada or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Anything's on the table, and I think the future of Star Wars for now is streaming. Yeah, uh, you well, know. So, and, and the more I think you're going to see more as they ramp up these shows, it's gonna. There's going to be more connective tissue. So, last or the first season, I should say, very much so, did focus on the Baby Yoda character, and, and you know, yeah, it looks like they're pulling back a little it. bit on this one. Yeah, well, it could be misdirection too to make you, you know, obviously it's it's you know the biggest selling point for a lot of people in that show was Baby Yoda. Yeah, he's but, gonna he's gonna find his family like in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that we see a lot bigger plot open up, and which I'm sure we will. You know, we had well possible Boba Fett. To me, it looks and, like those stormtroopers are on a star destroyer in a corridor. Oh, somewhere. That's a cool shot of those yeah. Yeah. speeders. Yeah, the speeder yeah. bikes looked awesome. There's a lot that there's a lot of stuff they left kind of dangling in front of us for the last season. Boba Fett's boots, possibly um, Moff Gideon and the Dark Saber. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of cool things that that are going to really expand upon hopefully in season two, and hopefully it's more than just a baby Yoda babysitting job. Well, you know something we something that was absent from the trailer that was very very much hyped uh, a few months back was. Um, Tamora Morrison in whatever role he's playing and mm-hmm. uh, Ahsoka. Right. No, that's right. I forgot about that. And I think it's, you know, I think they're holding they're holding those things back for good reason. Yeah. Because they think, well, if everybody already knows that they're going to be in this show, then we're, the least we can do is, you know, at least hold some things from trailers. So... Oh yeah! Hey, listen, Favreau is polishing his resume for Kennedy's job right here. Let's make it. <laughs> let, let's absolutely swing it out of the park with this one. Okay, so Sabine, the appearance of who I think is Sabine Wren makes yeah. sense. Yeah, she is a Mandalorian. Um, I think the the little bit in the trailer where the the voiceover is talking about the Jedi, and then you know she mysteriously disappears. I think that's a bit of a misdirect. Yeah, but um. It would make sense for Sabine to be in this show, especially, you know, if with the dark saber and she once had the dark saber and now Moff Gideon has it, but I don't know if that's who that character is. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's a good assumption. I think it's been rumored enough that she's in the show. So, Mm -hmm. and that's another thing to, to point out that uh, for people who haven't watched either the clone wars or rebels, you you may be at a loss for some of the things you see in season two of The Mandalorian because these these are some pretty big characters that were established in those animated shows, which are yeah. which are very much worth your time if if you haven't watched them. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm very hopeful for the second season. I really enjoyed uh, season one of of The Mandalorian. How many episodes are in in this season? Still eight, or is it more? I don't think it's been announced, but. Um, I think I mean, it eight, starts pretty soon. So yeah, I think eight's a pretty a pretty safe number. Um, I felt that eight was not enough last season, and if they're going to be planet hopping in some fan service planets, boy, this is going to go by fast. This is going to be a quick quick show. Maybe they could make some of the episodes longer. You know, most of the mm-hmm. episodes were right around forty minutes or so. So yeah, yeah, you know, maybe you know a fifty or fifty five minute episode would be you know, more appropriate to yeah. make up for some of that lost time and, you know, lack of episodes. Well, only thing about that is, you know, people <laughs> say that about the 40 minutes, but every time I watched an episode, I never felt like it was too short. I felt like each episode was exactly the length that it should be. Yeah, I just there's, wanted more. There's no, I just wanted more there's episodes. no fat on it. 
Yeah, um, and right. very very lean, very lean. And in the end, I can't complain. I mean, at the end of the season, I've got a what a four hour movie. Yeah. So, but I mean, um, you know, I think Filoni in the interview with Entertainment Weekly said there is going to be more length fluctuation this season. They're not going to be held strictly to the to the thirty or forty minute time limit because with streaming, it doesn't matter. You're not you're not being mandated by a network to come in at forty seven minutes with commercials or whatever. Previously so. on The Mandalorian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tracking across the desert. I'm trying to come up with a theme song for that. That that, that wasn't it. That wasn't uh, it, man. In t- on Tatooine, when they're doing that voiceover and he goes, Where? The Bantha opens his mouth at the yes. exact moment. <laughs> it yes. does. It's hilarious. It's like, oh, I was I like is that Bantha that. talking to us now or what? It, it looked that's it looks like the Bantha is talking. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Which, who knows? Well, we Maybe don't know. Are. They can't talk. I mean, that's we true. Never we don't got that close to all them. we've heard is. <laughs> Maybe they're saying something. Although to Mike's to Mike's point, when when we were actually watching the trailer a few minutes ago, Mike said, "I, you know, I hope that's Tatooine and not some misdirect." <laughs> I one hundred percent echo his sentiment. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. because yes. you know the man the Mandalorian season one. I was like. Okay, there's a sand crawler. There's Jawas. <laughs> Where else can this be? Well, it ain't Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, well, I like to think that the 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 Tuscan Raiders are uh, indigenous to Tatooine, true. and I can't imagine there are spacefaring Tuscan Raiders out no, there. No. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of you know, it's after watching it and, and listening to this discussion, I'm kind of in the camp that I think that Mike's right, that we're going to be seeing a lot of the fan service jump planets to where we're familiar with. So it, well it, now it I kind of want to see Mike's story of them tracking Luke Skywalker <laughs> now. And if it doesn't happen, <laughs> then you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> so are we going to see any of the Genesis of first order in this season? Do we think, I think didn't, they could lay some track for that. Didn't Snoke like dig him out of the, the mountainside, like Saruman did in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's what it. That's what it felt like. It's like, oh, here they are. It's this huge army. You know what about those Gamorrean guards fighting in the in the ring? That was really okay. cool. It was great. Except if you watch again, so it's so funny because the Gamorrean guards, when you think about like from the Return of the Jedi, were kind of like husky, you right? Know, large. Go back and watch. They these guys have the skinniest yeah. little pencil legs. They look like yes. some of the. Uh, they look like some of the original <laughs> concept drawings of the. The Gamorrean. They were yeah. so. It's, they they were this giant, oversized too. head and this tiny little, these little skinny legs. It's very funny. You know what? Thank you, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, for using original trilogy aliens. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, hello. That was the thing that was really sequel trilogy. The, the Force Awakens. <laughs> it's like, hey, here's some, uh, here's some uh, hammerheads. Oh no, 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 we don't want to show them. Let's, and then Ryan Johnson's like, let's show a bloated tick alien, because that's what people really want to <laughs> <Yeah>. see. <laughs> no, I mean, The Mandalorian scratches every itch that a Star Wars fan you know, has. It's, it's, that's what this show is really good for. It's the show that the Star Wars fans uh, deserved, and, uh, and knock on wood, it's going to give it to us again for uh, another season here. Yeah, and it looks like a more, you know, not that the storyline wasn't cohesive, but like throughout the entire season, it looks like it's, you know where it's going or you have, you, know, you may not know where it ends up or how it ends up, but you kind of know where it's going. Whereas the first season you're kind of like, okay, where's this going? But yeah. now we kind of know, and then you see it on the screen and it, it's just incredible. You know, I went back and watched the first trailer for the first season just to see if there were any similarities or things. And they, they did a good job in that first trailer of picking stuff from almost every episode. If you True. really look at it, they had, and I wonder if with that's zero the case baby Yoda. With this one with, yeah, with zero and well, we got zero Ahsoka, zero Boba Fett in this one, mm-hmm, although we kind of know that, you know, they're probably going to be in it at some point, but you know, it, it's, it's quite fascinating just the way they lay out the trailers and you know, the how marketing they of it. Yep. Yeah. And they, they don't really tell you a whole lot. But well, they, to their credit, to their credit too, because there's right. so many trailers that give up everything. So yeah, I still worst. don't know what the plot is, aside from Baby Yoda and him are still a team. Right. Well, here's something else too I noticed is um, 
Carl Weathers goatee is completely gray. Mm-hmm. So what's the time span? Well, he's been he's well, been doing a lot of spice, living large. See, I I noticed that too, and I, he doesn't have a goatee in season one. He he has a mustache, but not oh, really? a goatee. Yes, he's he's dressed kind of regally. He yeah. looks almost Lando yeah. Calrissian ish. He does, doesn't with he? With his cape and and everything. I I think here's here's the one prediction I have. I don't think Tamora Morrison is playing Boba Fett. I think mm. he's playing Captain Rex. Oh yeah. There's already rumors that there's a like a warlord sheriff on a town in Tatooine that's wearing Mandalorian armor. And they're so, saying that that's uh, Timothy, Timothy Oliphant's character. God, I so, forgot I mean, he was on it, too. Oh, yeah. wow. So, and, I mean, and Michael Bain is in it. I love Michael Bain. Michael Bain. From, Michael from Bain. Aliens? Uh, Bain. Aliens. Yeah, and uh, Terminator? Yeah, I know. Kyle Reese? But uh, so I mean, who knows? Who knows what we're gonna see with Tamora Morrison? I mean, he might just be a you know, he might be a armorless Boba hanging out and just doing his thing. You know, he could. You know what? He could be both of them. He, he mean, could be he both. He is Good. both of them. Yeah. I mean, it, what's so great about it though is that they've got the actors signed. We know they're in the show. They're Star Wars DNA all over this thing. It's you know that sounds it, gross. It, it is. It is. <laughs> But again, Favreau and Filoni are, are are giving the fans what they want, and you know, I I, I don't think they're going to steer us wrong. I think they they're on the pulse of the fan, and uh, they're going to give us a great show. I'm looking forward to it, guys. I mean, everything's speculation at this point. You know, I just am expecting a great show. Is there okay? Let me go around the table before we wrap it up. Brian, what is one thing you'd like to see from season two? Oh, man. One thing I'd like to see. Gosh. I wouldn't mind to see a see a lightsaber. Okay. In addition to the dark saber? In addition to the dark saber. Okay. Well, I, I think I wouldn't you'll... mind even a fight between somebody with a lightsaber and the dark saber. Yeah. I think that would be that would be really cool. I think the chances for that are high. Yeah. Mike, That's what about like you? Is there some uh, like? Is there just something you'd like to see? Well, I never felt like the Rontos got their <laughs> day in the sun, so I think. Do you think should... it would help them to be rendered it with non 1995 <laughs> CGI technology? I, I like to be able to have see them use a color uh, palette other than the one you can get from MS Paint. So uh, <laughs> that would be like a herd of Rontos with with. Better that's, uh, rendered jaw was. <laughs> that's that's good. I think you might see that, <laughs> Matt. I I want a little uh, closure with some Boba Fett. Okay. In uh, in the story, you know, obviously everyone loves Boba Fett, and uh, everyone kind of collectively feels that Boba Fett got done wrong. So let's get a little Boba Fett action and, and finish his story out uh, the way it's supposed to be. I'd like to see Boba Fett crawl out of the Sarlacc pit. He, he, he clamors out. He's on the, the rim. He stands up, defiantly raises his fist, and then trips and tumbles <laughs> right Falls back, back in. into it. I mean, we might get some flashbacks of, of the pit. And, now, that you know, would be great, a flashback of that. PTSD, awesome. Boba mm-hmm. Fett sitting in the cantina. He can't even drink his water anymore. He's just shaking the entire time. Well, I'm going to blame Mike for this, and I'm going to shoot for the stars. D.H. Mark Hamill. That's what yes. I want. That's what I want. Okay. I want what, I want just, some Luke Skywalker redemption. Well, where he's still alive. Jedi. He's five gonna say Jedi. he's gonna go, Well, I have this plan. And I'm gonna go to this island and act like I'm really bitter. <laughs> listen. <laughs> and I'm angry and I listen, hate the force. You better ha- you better hope <laughs> I don't catch you having a bad dream about me because I'll bust into your sleeping quarters and try to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, we no. might get some, we might get the real backstory. So, like Luke went to like the Quickie Mart and got some green milk, and he's like, "Where's this from?" This stuff, I, I can't live without well, this stuff. Okay, but that's you know this you stuff know, tastes better fresh. I think um, <laughs> you know I I'd, I'd love to see a a young Luke Skywalker at the end of their their journey. So who knows, Mike? Yeah. It's all your fault if it doesn't happen. Yeah, 
Hey, no. what if that lightsaber fight was Luke and Gideon fighting? Yeah. Well, okay, we got to be... stop because now <laughs> you're really <laughs> reaching <laughs> the stars. <laughs> but uh, all right. But listen, I want uh, this season. We're uh, we're we're bringing it to you every episode. We're going to be giving you our analysis. We're going to be breaking it down, and uh, we can't wait. It's one of our favorite things, and we're glad it's back. Actually, so. we can wait. We have to. We have no choice. That, that's Shut true, up, Mike. He, he, you're not helping this cause. <laughs> this is not the way, Mike. <laughs> thanks for uh, joining us tonight, Brian. Yeah, thanks yes. for having me. We'll see you back. Uh, we'll see you back sometime during the season, and we'll uh, we'll talk some more. All right, sounds great. Thanks for having me on. Great guys. All right, well, share the episode. Uh, share our podcast. We love your reviews. And hey, listen, if you want a shirt, you want a coffee mug, you want a picture of Jared or Mike, well, we don't have those yet, but we will. Go check out thehyperspace.net. We got a great store for you and uh, good merch. So, anyways, guys, we'll be dropping this episode uh, pretty much the day after every every Mandalorian. So look for the Carbonite Chronicles on your podcaster, guys. We have spoken. I have spoken. You know you can't live without this content. So subscribe to the Hyperspace Podcasting in the 25th Century. Follow us on social media. Leave us a review and join us next time as we take you into the 25th century.